Sup YouTube, and Visual Gaming Network, and welcome to episode 1 of a brand new Java game programming series. In this series, I hope to teach you guys how to program your very own games in Java from scratch without any prior knowledge. So you can literally know nothing about Java, nothing about programming whatsoever, and that's okay because I'll be teaching you step by step how to make a game in Java, and I'll explain everything that goes into it so you fully understand what's going on behind the scenes and in the code of the game. So in this series, I aim to create a game with you guys, which was pretty much uh, not a very original plot, kind of like an arcade game, but pretty much there'll be waves of enemies that are going to try to kill you. You can shoot the enemies, and when you kill the enemies, you gain some money, and in between waves, you, you can spend your money on power-ups and pretty much keep going until the enemy kills you. So yeah, not a very original plot, like I said before, but when you're learning how to program a game in Java or like just a beginner for game programming or making in general then it's a good start. So the program I'm using right now it is called Eclipse you can download it at eclipse.org which I'll leave a link in the description below. Now once you open up Eclipse you'll get this prompt let me just open it up. You'll get this prompt which asks you to declare your workspace. Now pretty much all your folders all your projects that you create in Eclipse it will be stored in this workspace folder. So if you click browse you can select where your workspace will be stored and uh, yeah once you've done that then click OK but I already said it so I don't need to. And also when you open up Eclipse you will be greeted with this welcome screen. You want to close that screen down by um, pressing the little X next to welcome it will be around in the top left somewhere. Now once you close that then there should be some things like down the bottom on the side, something like a navigator and outline, stuff like that. You want to press a little X next to these to close all these down. And I'm going to show you how I set up my Eclipse. You don't need to, you don't need to set up your Eclipse the way I set it up, but I'll show you how I set up my Eclipse, so it might be easier to follow in future tutorials. So what I do is that I click Window, I go Show View, and then I click Console. And whenever we want to print out something into the console, for example, um, the FPS we're getting every second or just to test something, like if we're trying to fix a bug or seeing if something works, then it will be all printed out in this console. And also, we're going to open up Package Explorer. Now what Package Explorer is, is when we create a project, it will appear in Package Explorer and uh, it pretty much helps us navigate our project. And so, yeah, let's create a new project. So you can hit this little thing here or you can go file new. So you click this and you want to click on Java project. If you can't find Java project then go into this little search bar here type Java project I spelt it. Java project and click on it and then click next. And now we are going to select the name for our Java project. Our project name I'm going to call it game programming Tutorial. And a little smiley face, because why not? And so, Java SE 1.8, that's the Java version I'm using. I'm using Java 1.8. You can select other versions if you want, but I'm going to use 1.8. And then hit finish. So, you can see in our Package Explorer, there's a new project that's been created. And if we click the little arrow, you can see there are two folders. The JRE system library, which holds all of Java's classes. And the source folder which we're going to be storing all our files in. Things like packages and classes, and I'll explain it in a second. So in our source folder, we're actually going to create something called a package. So select source, right click on it, go to new, package. And by the way, if you can't find package, what you can do is that you can go to other, and then you can search up package, and then click on it. And then we need to give a name for our package. And pretty much what packages are, packages are literally folders. And you guys probably know folders are useful for navigating files easier. So that's pretty much what packages are for. Pretty much folders that help us navigate our project easier. So we need to give a name for our package. We're going to call it com.ogn for official gaming network, my channel. com.ogn.tutorial. Now you don't really need to put a uh, com here. It's just kind of traditional. And by the way, these dots uh, that I'm putting in between the words, they're pretty much subfolders. So yeah, hit finish. And in our package, we're actually going to create a new class, which I'll also explain. Now go 
Now right click on your package, go to new, then class. And if you can't find it, just click other than type in class like I did with package in Java project. So yeah, hit class. Now we're going to give a name for our class in here. We're going to name our class game. Now this game class is going to be the main class of our project. You can name it main if you want. When I'm doing projects that aren't games, more like simulations or just other software in general, I like to name it main, but because we're making a game, I like to name it game. Then hit finish. Now you're probably thinking, if you're not familiar with like Java or programming at all, what is a class? Well, a class is pretty much a template in which we can write code in that will be executed. That's pretty much all you need to know. And because Java is an object oriented programming language, we can actually create objects out of this game class, but we don't really need to know that right now. I'll demonstrate that in the future. So I'm going to explain the layout of a class. This package thing here ap appears at the top of every class, so pretty much declares what package you're in. So public pretty much means the code we write in this game class can be used in other classes which we create in this project. So think of public as being free for other classes to use the code inside this game class. Now, class is pretty obvious what that is, and game is the name of our class. Now these curly brackets here store all the code that is in our game class. Whatever code we write in here in our, is in our game class. I realize this package, com.ogn.tutorial, isn't inside of our game class because it's not within these curly brackets. But if we but if there's stuff that are in these curly brackets, this is part of the game class because it's this, it's within the curly brackets. I should just quickly bring this up. When you're writing code, you can leave comments in your code. Now, comments are pretty much just little notes you can leave throughout your code. So, let's say I'm writing uh, some code here, and I can make a comment explaining what this code does. So, let's type, to make a comment, you type double slash, and you can see the color of this changes. Sorry, that was just my phone. At this, you could type, this is a comment. Now, whenever we run our game, this this comment won't affect our game in any way. It's just literally a comment. And by the way, to make a multi-lined comment, you type slash, then asterisk. And if you press enter, you can see it creates more lines. And, and as you can see, the asterisk and a slash marks the end of a multi-lined comment. So, yeah, we're going to write one line of code in today's episode, we're going to print out hello world into the console, because why not? So now I'm going to create the main method for this game class and for our entire project. I'm just going to write some lines of code, just follow along and I'll, I'll explain it in a second. So I type public static void main, then in brackets string and square brackets args, and then put curly brackets to finish it off. And realize how I put curly brackets here, just like the game class, so that means whatever code we write inside this game class will be contained within this public static void main. So public you guys already know about. Static and string args I won't really explain right now. Well, mainly because string args isn't really important. And we're going to be doing similar things like this in the future, so I'll just explain it then. And by the way, think of a method as something that contains code inside of it. And because this contains code inside of it, think of it as a method. And remember that because we're going to be using methods a lot in the future. So yeah, why we actually create this main method is because the main method is pretty much where code starts running at. So whenever we run our game, Java looks for the main method. And all the code inside the main method are the first lines of code to be executed. And all the code that is outside the main method get called after. So pretty much the main method is a place where code can start running. So, yeah, we're just going to write one line of code, and that line of code is going to print out hello world into the console. So, you can type, so to print out something into the console, you type system.out.println, and then we put brackets, and then a semicolon. Now, in these brackets, put quotation or speech marks, and in these speech marks is pretty much what we want to type into the console. So, we want to type hello world into the console. So also, this line of code is called a statement, and all statements end in semicolons. So, realize with methods, methods are, think, lines of code that contain other code, but methods, or, I mean, statements, they don't contain code. So, yeah. Also, I actually recorded this tutorial before, but it didn't really work, because because what happened is that when I actually pressed run, the I would get an error, like, and I'll show you. It says error, could not load or find main class, and I actually managed to fix that 
And uh, it's a really weird reason why. Pretty much, it was this smiley face causing the error. I know, it sounds like a really stupid thing, but we can actually rename, rename our thing. So go right click on your project, go refractor, rename, and delete that smiley face. I know, it's a really stupid reason. Do not ask me why it does that. But yeah, so let's run our game now. And as you can see, hello world prints out in the, into the console. So we can pretty much type in anything we want. Let's type in random letters. Yeah, also we can do math. Instead of printing out a, a string, which is the thing in quotation marks, it's called a string. I'll explain strings a bit more in the future when you need to know about them. But we could also like put in math on, so we could type out system.out.println 3 plus 4 we run it comes out with seven and so yeah it's gonna wrap up episode one i hope you really enjoyed the series if you did make sure to leave a like a comment and subscribe episodes will be coming out once a week and there's no like set day for when when the episode will come out on that week so yeah if you enjoyed please leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys soon bye